Hello there, welcome to CCTV News. This is a special live coverage on the build up to the launch of China's Shenzhou 10 spacecraft, the very latest episode in the country's manned space program, and Pandong in Beijing. Shenzhou 10 is set to blast off from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center very soon. The exact timetable of the launch will be announced at a news conference to be held at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We will also find out all the details of every stage of the Shenzhou 10 mission, including its launch rendezvous, its manned docking with the Tiangong 1 space lab, and its eventual return to Earth. The lineup of the Shenzhou 10 crew is also expected to be announced. Much of the speculation has, has centered on who will become the only female member of the crew, the nation's second female astronaut so far. Now let's Gentlemen, go live to the press conference. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. 今天宫一号与神舟十号载人飞行任务种子汇报研究决定神舟十号飞船将于六月十一日实施发射。The Tiangong One and Shenzhou Ten mission headquarters of Chinese manned space engineering has decided of discussion that Shenzhou Ten spaceship will be launched on June the 11th. 今天我们很高兴地请来了中国载人航天工程新闻发言人。中国载人航天工程办公室副主任吴平女士给大家介绍情况。Today we are very glad to have invited the spokesperson of Chinese Manned Space Engineering, Vice Director of Chinese Manned Space Agency, Ms. Wu Ping, to introduce the situation of the mission and answer your questions. 首先，请吴平女士给大家介绍情况。First, let's invite Ms. Wu Ping to introduce the mission situation. 女士们，先生们，记者朋友们，大家下午好。Ladies and gentlemen, journalists, friends, good afternoon. 受任务总指挥部委托，由我向大家介绍天宫一号与神舟十号载人飞行任务有关情况。Commissioned by the mission headquarters, I'd like to introduce the situation of the Tiangong One Shenzhou Ten manned spaceflight mission. 经任务总指挥部研究决定，定于六月十一日十七时三十八分发射神舟十号载人飞船。The mission headquarters has decided after discussion that Shenzhou Ten manned spaceship will be launched at 17 hours 38 minutes on June the 11th.飞行乘组由南航天员聂海胜、张晓光。和女航天员王亚平组成，聂海胜担任指令长。The crew consists of male astronauts Ye Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and female astronauts Wang Yaping. Ye Haisheng is the commander. 今天下午，执行此次发射任务的长征二号F遥驶火箭将开始加注推进剂。The Long March 2F Y10 rocket for this launching mission. Is going to start propellant loading this afternoon. 此次任务的主要目的，一是发射神舟十号飞船，为天宫一号目标飞行器在轨运营提供人员和物资天地往返运输服务。The main objectives of this mission are as follows: first, to launch Shenzhou Ten manned spaceship and provide crew and cargo transportation service for the orbit. Operation of Tiangong One target vehicle. 进一步考核交会对接技术和载人天地往返运输系统的功能性能。Thus, further verify the rendezvous and docking technology, as well as the function and performance of the space transportation system. 二是进一步考核组合体对航天员生活、工作和健康的保障能力。以及航天员执行飞行任务的能力。Second, to further verify the supporting capability of Tiangong One for the life, work, and health of astronauts, as well as the capabilities of astronauts in carrying out space missions. 三是进行航天员空间环境适应性和空间操作功效研究，开展空间科学实验和航天器在轨维修等试验。Third, to carry out astronaut space environment adaptability and space operation economic study, 
conduct space science experiments, spacecraft on orbit maintenance experiments, and the first spacecraft by Taikonauts. 四是进一步考核工程各系统执行飞行任务的功能、性能和系统间协调性。Fourth, to further test the function and the performance, as well as the coordination of various systems of the engineering project. The status of each system of this mission is basically the same with that of Shenzhou 9 mission. To further improve the safety, reliability, and to be suitable for the specific requirements of this mission, partial technical alterations have been made in Shenzhou 10 spaceship and the Long March 2F Y10 rocket. 此次任务中，航天员将通过在轨操作完成对天宫一号有关设施设备的。Uh, during this mission, Technos will change and repair some of the equipment and facilities in Tiangong One through orbit, uh, orbit operations. 本次任务，飞船计划在轨飞行十五天。In this mission, the spaceship is scheduled to fly in space for 15 days. 飞船入轨后，将按照预定程序。先后与天宫一号进行一次自动交会对接和一次航天员手控交会对接。After entering into the orbit, the spaceship will carry out one auto rendezvous and docking and one astronaut manual rendezvous and docking according to the scheduled procedure. 组合体飞行期间，航天员航天员进驻天宫一号，并开展航天医学实验、技术试验。During the flight of the complex, Taikonauts will enter and stay in Tiangong One, conduct space, science, space medicine experiments, technology experiments, and space class activities, etc. 完成组合体飞行后，飞船撤离并返回着陆场，天宫一号转至长期运行轨道。After the flight of the complex. The spaceship will retreat and return to the landing site, while Tiangong One will maneuver to long-term oper operating orbit. 目前，天宫一号运行在预定的交会对接轨道上。Now, Tiangong One is operating in the scheduled rendezvous and docking orbit. 状态稳定，设备工作正常，推进剂等消耗性资源充足。满足交会对接任务要求和航天员进驻条件。The status is stable. Equipments work normally, and expendable resources such as uh, propellant are adequate, which can satisfy the requirements of the rendezvous and docking mission and astronaut habitation. 执行神舟十号飞行任务的各系统已完成综合演练，航天员飞行乘组状态良好。发射前各项准备已基本就绪。Integrated rehearsal involving various systems of Shenzhou 10 mission has completed. The crew is in good condition, and all the preparatory works before launch are completed. 以上介绍的是关于这次任务的有关情况。下面我愿意回答大家的提问。That's the introduction of the situation of this mission. Next, I'd like to answer your questions. 好，下面请记者朋友们提问。提问前，请先报告一下所代表的新闻机构。Uh, next, uh, uh, questions and, and answers. When you ask your questions, please mention your news agency first. Yeah, 谢谢主持人，发言人您好。刚刚您介绍了这个乘组的成员哈，我是中央电视台和中国网络电视台的记者。我想问一下，这一次我们神十的飞行乘组的三名成员，他们的任务分工是怎样的？跟上一次神九的我们的三名航天员的任务分工有什么样的不同？谢谢。呃、uh, ，You have just uh, introduced uh, the uh, Shenzhou Ten crew just now, and I'm from uh, CCTV. Uh, could you tell me the job uh, divisions of the three uh, astronauts? What is the difference between uh, Shenzhou 9 crew? 好
。刚才我已经向大家介绍了神舟十号飞行任务的呃乘组，由聂海胜、张晓光和王亚平三名航天员组成。I have just introduced that the Shenzhou Ten crew is consisted of、uh, astronauts Nie Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and Wang Yaping. Nie Haisheng is a former astronaut of the Shenzhou Six flight crew. He has a rich experience flying the Shenzhou Six. Among them, Nie Haisheng has carried out Shenzhou Six flight mission. He has abundant flight experience, and in this mission, he is the commander. Zhang Xiaoguang is the first flight selection crew. 经过长期刻苦的训练，他的飞天梦想将在这次任务任务中得以实现。张晓光 is one of the first batch of technos selected and trained in China. Uh, after long-term hard training, uh, he will realize his flight dream in this mission. 王亚平是我国选拔培训的第一批两名女航天员之一。王亚平 is one of the uh, first uh, uh, batch of uh, female technos. Uh, Uh, including two females. Uh, 神舟九号任务中，我们采用了新老搭配、男女配合的呃乘组组合。In 神舟神舟 nine mission, we adopted the principle of、uh, the combination of the old and the new, a cooperation of male with female. 呃，实践表明，这种组合呢，能够充分发挥乘组中每个人的呃特长和优势。Uh, the practice has demonstrated that this kind of combination can make full use of the advantages of、uh, each crew member. 不但有利于更好的完成任务，也有利于航天员队伍的锻炼和成长。Uh, it is not only good for the accomplishment of the mission, but also good for the growth and the testing of the astronaut team. 呃，我们所以呢，在神事任务中仍然采用了这种乘组乘组的组合。So in Shenzhou Ten mission, we also adopted this、uh, combination method. 同神舟九号飞行乘组相比，呃，这次呢，两名航天员呢，男航天员均是还是仍然是互为备份。Uh, comparing with、uh, Shenzhou Nine uh, crew, uh, in this mission, the two male astronauts are、uh, also mutually back up. 他们均具有呃飞船驾驶、组合体管理。手控交会对接，以及在故障情况下应急处置的能力。呃、uh, ，They are both、uh, capable of carrying out、uh, space spaceship piloting, the complex management, uh, auto uh, manual random and docking, as well as、uh, the handling of、uh, mail functions in emergency. 女航天员在神事任务中呃增加了太空授课的任务，而且由女航天员担任主讲。Uh, in Shenzhou Ten mission, the female astronauts is supplemented with the space teaching mission, and、uh, she will serve as the main instructor. 还有呢，就是女航天员在这次任务中也具备手控交会对接的能力。Uh, furthermore, the female astronaut is also capable of carrying out manual random and docking mission. 此外呢，这次神舟十号在轨飞行的时间更长。他们在轨将会开展更多的科学实验和技术试验。In addition,、uh, the Shenzhou Ten crew will fly even longer in, on orbit, and they will carry out more space science experiments and technology experiments. 好，谢谢。Thank you. 好，请继续提问。把第三排拉位，李叔。呃，谢谢主持人，范仁您好，我是人民日报和人民网的记者。那我的问题呢，也是关于不同点，但是我想问的是，呃，这次神舟十号飞行任务，它整体的这个性质和目的，和我们以往的神舟八号和九号相比，有哪些不同？谢谢。Uh, I'm from People's Daily and its website.、Uh, I'm also concerned about the differences between the、uh, between the、uh, the missions.、Uh, so, in the aspect of、uh, the features and objectives. What's the difference of、uh, Shenzhou Ten mission with Shen, compared with Shenzhou Eight and Shenzhou Nine? 嗯，好。神舟八号和神舟九号飞行任务主要目的是突破和考核呃空间交会对接技术，包括自动交会对接和手控交会对接。In Shenzhou Eight and Shenzhou Nine spaceflight missions, the main objective is to make breakthrough and master 
uh, random and docking technology, including auto and manual random and docking technology. 本次神舟十号任务，呃，主要是进一步验证和巩固这一技术，同时呢，也更加注重为空间站建造积累经验。Uh, the main objective of uh, Shenzhou 10 mission is to further verify and uh, strengthen this technology, and at the same time, we will focus uh, on the accumulation of experience for the construction of the manned space station. 与前两次任务相比，神舟十号任务主要突出以下几点。And comparing with the previous two flight missions, uh, Shenzhou 10 mission has the following uh, highlights. 一是验证和巩固交会对接技术。The first is to verify and strengthen rendezvous and docking technology. 截止到目前，我们仅进行了三次自动交会对接和一次手控交会对接。我们还需要更多飞行试验来考核验证这一技术。Up to now, we have only conducted three auto-random and docking and one manual random and docking. We need more flight tests for verification. 二是呢，进一步验证航天员在轨驻留相关技术。The second is to very uh, to further verify related technologies of astronaut on orbit uh, habitation. 这次神舟十号任务呢，计划在轨飞行十五天，将进一步验证和考核嗯。载人飞船以及组合体对航天员工作、生活、健康的保障能力，以及验证呢改进措施的有效性。呃、uh, ，In this mission, the Shenzhou 10 spaceship uh, is scheduled to fly in space for 15 days. Uh, uh, they will further uh, verify the supporting capabilities of the manned spaceship and the complex for the for the work life and health of astronauts. As well as the effectiveness of the improvement uh, measures. 同时还将开展航天医学和功效学等方面的试验，为更长时间的太空飞行积累经验。Uh, at the same time, uh, space medicine and the space economic uh, experiments will also be contact, conducted, so as to accumulate experience for even longer space flights. 三呢是开展空间站建造。呃，相关的技术试验。Third is to to test related technologies of the construction of the space station. 神舟十号任务期间将安排开展天宫一号、呃地板还有密封圈等更换的在轨操作维修。During the Shenzhou 10 uh, flight missions, uh, on-orbit repair and maintenance operations will be arranged, including the changing of the floor and the And the replacement of the hatch ceiling. 还将试行开展飞船绕飞试验，这些都是在为空间站的建造储备技术奠定基础。Uh, and the space、uh, spaceship maneuvering test will be conducted according to circumstances, circumstances, which will、uh, will accumulate technology and lay a foundation for the construction of space station. 此外，这次任务期间还将开展科普教育活动。航天员将面向中小学生进行太空授课。Uh, in addition, during this mission, we also we are also going to conduct science education activities. The astronauts will、uh, give a space class for middle school and primary school students. 就神舟飞船和长征二号 F 运载火箭组成的这个天地往返运输系统而言，这次飞行任务的性质是应用性飞行。它将为天宫一号，呃，提那个天宫一号在轨驻留提供人员和物资的，呃，往。Well, that was a press conference on the upcoming launch of the Shenzhou 10 a space mission, and it's just been announced that the spacecraft will be launched at 17:38 Beijing time on June the 11th. That's Tuesday, and on Monday,、uh, propel loading for the carrier rocket Long March、uh, 2F has already started, and there will be a three astronaut crew,、uh, including、uh, Mr. Nie Haisheng, Mr. Zhang Xiaoguang, and a female astronaut Wang Yaping. And Nie Haisheng is the commander of the crew. Now, Jin Yingchao takes a look at the crew. Nie Haisheng will be the mission's chief commander. It will be his second time in space after also taking part in the Shenzhou 6 mission. 
and this mission is something new in store for him. On Shenzhou 9, there was a 24-hour rotation policy, which meant the crew had to work 24 hours a day. But this time, we can sleep during the night, and after finishing our daily duties, we'll have time to relax and do things, like appreciate the beautiful view of space and listen to some music. Niu Haisheng was born in a small village in Zhaoyang County in central China's Hubei province, the sixth of ten children. Nia's family was so poor that he only finished middle school with help from his teacher and neighbors. I was in the second year of junior high school when my father died. My family was so poor, I was forced to stop school and work in order to earn money. My teacher visited my family many times to try to persuade me to return. Finally, I went back to school. I wouldn't have what I have now without my teacher. That was the most important turning point in my life. The second turning point was after I graduated from high school and joined the army to become a pilot. That was the first step along my career path. The third turning point was passing the physical test for astronauts in 1996, which finally offered me the opportunity to go into space. Zhang Xiaoguang was chosen in 1998 for China's space mission. Fifteen years later, finally he's ready to go. I will look at our beautiful planet, our beautiful homeland. I can find out whether it's possible to see the Yangtze River and Yellow River. I can take a look at the deep universe and shining stars. I feel very excited. Since the team of astronauts was created in 1998, China has carried out four manned space missions. Whenever they reach space, they always phone their families. And this time is no exception. I think of my father. He said, son, go, be courageous and careful. I also think of my wife. I know she's very busy. Our child is taking exams for high school. A couple of days ago, I went home and said, you must be very tired. You know what she said? She was like, not at all. This is what I must do for my family and my love. Wang Yaping is the only female in the crew. She'll become the second Chinese female astronaut in space. It's been a long and winding road to the launch pad. It takes a great deal to become an astronaut. You have to be outstanding overall, have great specialty knowledge, go through lots of rigorous training to adapt to the space environment, and take very strict tests that allow almost no errors or mistakes. Before becoming an astronaut candidate, Wang used to be a pilot. She flew as part of relief efforts following the Wintran earthquake in 2008, as well as in other operations at the Beijing Olympic Games. I remember the first time I flew a plane on my own. I turned around and found my trainer was not with me. I was really thrilled and had a good shout in the cockpit. It's like I could finally do this on my own. One united Chinese dream. They can fly themselves. Jane Chow, CCTV. Reaching for the stars. The next chapter in China's space program. Three astronauts docking with the Tiangong 1 space module. With more experiments and technical breakthrough, pushing the boundaries of human achievement on a mission to the infinite cosmos. Mission Shenzhou 10. See it on CCTV News. China's Shenzhou Tan spacecraft will be launched on June the 11th. Preparations for the launch have entered their final stage. Shenzhou Tan spacecraft has been assembled and the Long March 2F carrier rocket has been transported to the launch site. Shenzhou Tan will conduct several missions in space, including rendezvous and docking with the Tiangong 1 space lab. Astronauts will carry out experiments in the space module. The crew has been doing simulator training on the ground and is now ready for the mission. The Tiangong-1 space lab has been brought down to a docking orbit and is ready for the rendezvous and docking with Shenzhou-Tan. 
Meanwhile, search and rescue teams are on the job for the Shenzhou Tan mission. The, initi the initiation ceremony has been held in Shanghai's Waigaochao dock. Rescue ships number 101 and number 112 have set off to join others. A marine network has been set up. It will search for and collect fragments that fall from the spaceship and be on standby if the astronauts need to use the emergency return capsule. The 2400 nautical mile network spans from East China's Jiangsu province all the way to the island of Guam in the West Pacific. The Rescue Bureau of the East China Sea was also in charge for Shenzhou 7, 8 and 9 missions. China's space ambitions date back to the 1960s. The country's first satellite launch center in Zhouquan in the northwestern Gansu province had sent 29 satellites into space. Now Tambo has this report from the site. About 20 minutes drive from Dongfeng Space City is China's very first satellite launch center. It is called Base 2, where China started its space program in the 1960s. Once fully occupied with the country's top space scientists, it's now only guarded by six soldiers. The chief designer of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, Xu Kejun, used to work there, and he tells me why people had to leave. After decades of operation, launch facilities at Base 2 became less suitable for more launch missions. The old umbilical towers and related facilities couldn't meet the needs of the new launch technologies for China's manned space program. That's why we need to build a new launch center and abandon this old one. Although deprecated, Base 2 still inspired Xu on the design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We adopted the vertical testing and short-term vertical transportation systems that were used at Base 2 in our design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The new launch techniques actually originate from the old site. In total, 29 satellites were launched from the old site, not mentioning missions for launch vehicle testing. And this is the launch pad from where China's very first satellite blasted off in 1970. It's no longer operational and serves as an educational base. And in the more than 40 years since that launch, China's space program has made tremendous progress. Today, China is one of the major players in the space arena. Chinese communication satellites and weather satellites provide China and other customers with their valuable services. In 2003, China became the third country with a successful crewed space program by sending an astronaut into space aboard Shenzhou 5 spacecraft. Five years later, Chinese astronauts on board the Shenzhou 7 spacecraft completed their first spacewalk. In 2011, China launched the first module of their space station, the Tiangong-1, and successfully completed the docking with Shenzhou 9 spacecraft China has also turned its focus to deep space exploration, starting with the moon. It launched the country's first lunar orbiter, Chang'e 1, in late 2007, making China the fifth nation to orbit the moon. Xu tells me that the old launch center carries the hard-working spirit of Chinese space working staff, and that will continue to inspire more people to contribute as China's space program moves forward. Tangbo, CCTV, Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Now, how about spending your life working and living in a remote desert? That's exactly what thousands of scientists are doing at Dongfeng Space City, China's first spacecraft launch center deep in the northwest desert of Inner Mongolia. The nearest city is two hours away by car. Wang Xinye went to ask some of the scientists how they're coping with life on the base and what made them choose the career. Software engineer Dr. An Jinxia is a key member of the data analysis team for China's Shenzhou Town program. Her expertise means she's played a part in every one of China's manned space missions. But she never envisaged the life in the desert. Dr. An has a PhD from Tsinghua University in Beijing. She married in 1998, but her husband came straight to work at the Dongfeng Space City while well, she remained in Beijing, finishing her degree. Then the chance came along to join him in the desert. My husband and I married in 1998, but didn't live together. I really want to stay with him. 
So two years later, when I was given a chance to transfer, I came here from. I like what I'm doing, and I enjoy working with those who've given a lot to China's space program. I feel Beijing immediately. She's now the mother of a nine-year-old, but it's not just family ties that keep her here. I'm proud to be part of it. Others arrived at the base by a different path. Qi Chudong joined the Space City's technological department last year as an engineer. He grew up in Guangdong Province, but decided to move as far away as possible from China's prosperous southern coastal areas. He says he was simply curious to experience a different lifestyle. Many young people find life here very boring, especially with the lack of nightlife. But I like the quietness here. I grew up in Guangdong and have been so familiar with urban life. Now I want something very different from that. There is not much entertainment in this small city. Some even say life here is dull. But people like An Junxia and Qi Chudong rather enjoy the simplicity. They say the sense of achievement they feel from being a part of China's space dream can easily make up for what's been missing in their life. Wang Xinye, CCTV, Dongfeng Space City. Reaching for the stars. The next chapter in China's space program. Three astronauts docking with the Tiangong One space module. With more experiments and technical breakthrough, pushing the boundaries of human achievement on a mission to the infinite cosmos. Mission Shenzhou 10. See it on CCTV News. Among the three astronauts chosen to board Shenzhou Tan spacecraft, Wang Yaping is the only female. She will become the second female astronaut from China to enter space after Liu Yang made history last year as part of the crew of the Shenzhou 9. In the days leading up to the launch, Wang and her two crewmates will go through repeated physical and psychological tests. But this is just a fraction of the preparations she's made to take her first space flight. Zhang Yilei has the details. When Wang Yaping saw Liu Yan before the Shenzhou 9 launch last year, she had a few words for her. I said to her, you are the pride of women. Fly with our dreams and I'll have your back here on the ground. Now it's Wang's turn to fly. But it's been a long and winding road to the launch pad. After undergoing a strict selection process back in April 2009, Wang was selected as one of the few female candidates to become a Chinese astronaut. And her life since has been even more challenging. It takes a great deal to become an astronaut. You have to be outstanding overall, have great specialty knowledge, go through lots of rigorous training to adapt to the space environment, and take very strict tests that allow almost no errors or mistakes. Preparing for the Shenzhou 10 mission has occupied almost all of her spare time. In the past three years, Wang has only taken two to three breaks from her training. She was cleared for space just as she entered her second year of astronaut training. Her fellow astronauts say such quick progress is rare, but it's come from a lot of personal hard work. I think the training has helped me grow up. I've learned to accept my imperfections and fully embrace teamwork with my crewmates. This is what has motivated me to pass one test after another. Before becoming an astronaut candidate, Wang used to be a pilot. She flew as part of relief efforts following the Wenchuan earthquake in 2008, as well as in other operations at the Beijing Olympic Games and in several exercises. Full of passion, Wang has always been ready to take on new challenges as a pilot. I remember the first time I flew a plane on my own. I turned around and found my trainer was not with me. I was really thrilled and had a good shout in the cockpit. It's like I could finally do this on my own. 
When the first Chinese astronaut made his debut in the nation's made a manned space mission 10 years ago, one was watching on TV. I was so proud and also very excited. But as I watched it, it occurred to me we have male pilots and female pilots, and then a male astronaut. When will there be a female astronaut? And today, it's me becoming one of the first few. Liu Yang told Wang that when she arrives in the space station, there would be a surprise for her. A surprise only for the space goers to discover. Zhang Xiaoguang was part of the backup team for Shenzhou 9 last year but was not called up. Now finally he's been chosen as one of the three astronauts for Shenzhou 10 and this is his first space mission. Jing Yingqiao has the story. It's a long-awaited Chinese dream. Zhang Xiaoguang was chosen in 1998 for the space mission. Fifteen years later, he's finally ready to go. I will look at our beautiful planet, our beautiful homeland. I can find out whether it's possible to see the Yangtze River and Yellow River. I can take a look at the deep universe and shining stars. I feel very excited. And Zhang's trip is the award of years of dull and tough training. Physical training to adapt to the outer space environment, psychological training, technological expertise, life-saving techniques, and more. Every space mission has its own distinctive training session. But it's also important, if not dispensable, to have some fun. We have an electronic device. Inside there are books, music. I also copied some other stuff inside. During our flight, our mission is arduous. We don't have that much time to watch movies and TV, but we can listen to some music, keep a journal, and take pictures of the beautiful scenery. Recreational activities allow the spacemen stay positive. And through all the training assimilating real space missions, Zhang has got the hang of it. I've got so much out of it. The training transferred our theories to reality. It lets us know what I can do to keep everything neat and in order, so we won't be all fingers and thumbs in space. Since the team of astronauts was created in 1998, China has carried out four manned space missions. Whenever they reach space, they always phone their families. And this time is no exception. I think of my father. He said, son, go, be courageous and careful. I also think of my wife. I know she's very busy. Our child is taking exams for high school. A couple of days ago, I went home and said, you must be very tired. You know what she said? She was like, not at all. This is what I must do for my family and my love. And John says that same love is also in his dreams to explore the space. Jane Chow, CCTV. Ni Haisheng will be the chief commander of the Shenzhou 10 space crew. It will be his second time in space after participating in the Shenzhou 6 mission. In an interview with CCTV, he told us what makes this mission different and shared some personal thoughts about his fellow crew members. Shenzhou 10 will be China's fifth manned mission to space and will last 12 days. It will transport personnel and cargo to and from the Tiangong-1 space lab module. Like the previous Shenzhou 9 mission, it will perform a manned docking with the space station. But unlike the previous mission, Nia says astronauts will have more time to enjoy their time in space. We'll have a lot more free time than we did on the Shenzhou 9 mission. Yeah. On Shenzhou 9, there was a 24-hour rotation policy, which meant the crew had to work 24 hours a day. But this time, we can sleep during the night, and after finishing our daily duties, we'll have time to relax and do things, like appreciate the beautiful view of space and listen to some music. One of Shenzhou 10's main tasks will be to dock with the Tiangong-1 module. To prepare, Nia has practiced the docking almost 2,000 times. Even for a top astronaut, the repetitive training can become tiresome. But according to Nie, his crewmate Zhang Xiaoguang has shown the best mental focus so far. 
For many years, he's repeated his training over and over again and has never given up. He's the kind of man that never quits until his goal is achieved. He also had high praise for his other crewmates, Wang Yaping. Wang Yaping works very hard. She's only been with us for three years, but just after her second year here, she was already qualified to conduct the mission. That would be impossible without her hard work. She pays much attention to the details of her work. During their mission, the three astronauts will also speak to a group of students via a video feed. The success of all their mission tasks will depend on the three astronauts' teamwork. Nia said they have all learned to work well together over time. Zhang Xiaoguang is very extroverted and warm-hearted. We've worked and lived together for 15 years. We've been sharing our thoughts on almost everything. He likes to make jokes and he makes everyone happy. Wang Yaping is a diligent astronaut. Judging from our experience training together, I think she'll do very well in her job. Nie Haisheng was born in a small village in Zaoyang City in central China's Hubei province. He was the sixth of ten children in his family. Growing up, Nie's family was so poor that he only finished middle school with help from his teacher and neighbors. I was in the second year of junior high school when my father died. My family was so poor, I was forced to stop school and work in order to earn money. My teacher visited my family many times to try to persuade me to return. Finally, I went back to school. I wouldn't have what I have now without my teacher. That was the most important turning point in my life. The second turning point was after I graduated from high school and joined the army to become a pilot. That was the first step along my career path. The third turning point was passing the physical test for astronauts in 1996, which finally offered me the opportunity to go into space. Nie was asked whether he hoped to set a record for longest time in space after completing his first space flight on Shenzhou 6. He replied, maybe I will hold that record for a while, but it will soon be broken by other newcomers. Nie's words seem to be coming true as the Chinese space program continues to develop rapidly, with more Chinese astronauts looking to discover the mysteries of outer space. The selection process for astronaut candidates is very strict. Now, in our virtual studio demonstration, let's take a look at how it's done. Hello and welcome to our virtual space studio. Space missions are huge undertakings requiring the efforts of thousands of people. It's a huge commitment of time, money, energy, wisdom, patience and courage. But the ones in the spotlight taking all the risks are the astronauts. And today we're very glad to have Mr. Guo Jiong on our program. Mr. Guo is a research fellow from the Center for Space Utilization at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Well, the crew selection for Shenzhou 10 has been under a lot of scrutiny, and the same as the previous mission, the team consists of two males and one female. Let's now meet every one of them. Okay, let's meet Nie Hai Sheng. Uh, I think he is more familiar to the public as he was uh, one of the crew members on Shenzhou 6, which was launched in October 2005, and spent five days in the space. The uh, crew verified the uh, performance of the uh, improved life supporting uh, system. Another astronaut is Zhang Xiaoguang. Although this will be his first flight, Zhang was among the uh, first group of Chinese astronauts selected and trained in 1998. And uh, he was also in the backup uh, crew for Shenzhou 9. Uh, with Nie Haisheng and Wang Yaping. Now let's meet Wang Yaping. Wang Yaping is the only woman selected for this mission. The 35-year-old has spent 12 years as a pilot. The designers have adjusted her spacesuit and seat to adapt to the female figure. And Wang Yaping was also part of the backup crew for Shenzhou 9. She was so close to become China's first woman in space. And so far, China has sent eight people to space. We prepared this photo gallery to introduce all of them. So Yang Liwei is the first Chinese national in space. Ten years ago, he spent 21 hours on board Shenzhou 5. And uh, let's meet Nie Haisheng. 
Nihashen was the uh, flight engineer of uh, Shenzhou 6, uh, launched in uh, 2005, and he was not alone. Uh, Fei Junlong was his commander, and uh, the journey uh, lasted five days. And next, we have Jai Zhigang. Jai Zhigang didn't just fly to space, he actually walked in space. It was an amazing 26 minutes. He waved the Chinese flag and said the famous words, Shenzhou 7 has left the module, and I physically feel very good. And he was also commander of that mission. Mm -hmm. And Liu Beming remained the uh, open port of the uh, module, assisted in Jai's uh, space work. And uh, he also performed stand-up uh, EVA, and partially leaving the uh, module in order to hand the Jai a Chinese flag. Now let's meet Jing Haipeng. Jing Haipeng was also a crew member of Shenzhou 7, but he was assigned to remain in the re-entry module, and that gave him the chance to travel again. Jing was selected as the commander of Shenzhou 9 last year, becoming the first repeat traveler of the Chinese program. Uh, Jing had two uh, teammates. Liu Yang uh, was the first Chinese woman in space. Uh, she underwent two years of training before the journey and uh, performed the experiment in space medicine. All right, and finally, we have Liu Wang. He was the flight engineer of Shenzhou 9 and manually docked with Tiangong 1, the prototype for China's planned space station. All right, we've now met all of China's astronauts, and you might have noticed this very interesting gender combination of two males and one female. It seems that this kind of model works pretty well for this kind of space missions. Well, uh, since uh, women has the, uh, have their uh, advantages, they are more psychologically stable, more uh, patient, and uh, uh, meticulous. So this is uh, especially important uh, during the... Uh, a long time mission and in the isolated space. Um, interesting fact is that uh, ten, one tenth of uh, astronauts are female worldwide, so you see we still have room for improvement. Well, to become an astronaut requires intensive training and a rigorous selection process, and it's tougher than anything most of us will ever experience. So the following footage might give you an idea of what it's like to be an astronaut. An uh, astronaut candidate has to uh, meet the general conditions first, like age, height, weight, previous experience, education, and so on. Then he needs to pass the medical and the psychological uh, examination and the tests. After this, he has to prove the tolerance uh, to the extreme conditions in the space environment, uh, things like weightlessness and severe temperature conditions and so on. Selected uh, astronauts still need to be trained so that they can make the right judgment and the decision, as well as uh, proper operation in the space flight missions. Well, once you become an astronaut, out of this world, journeys await. There's plenty of excitement and danger as well. That's all from us. Let's get back to our main studio here on Earth. Control, do you read me? Yes, good. main studio copy. Uh, well, uh, China has just uh, held a press conference on the upcoming launch of the, the uh, uh, upcoming launch of the Shenzhou 10 space craft. Uh, for more on that, let's uh, cross live to our reporter Tang Bo, who's at Jiu Quan Satellite Launch Center. Hello, Tang Bo. What are the highlights of this press conference? Well, the name of those uh, three astronauts has been released at the press conference. They are Ni Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and Wang Yaping, and they have different uh, tasks to do. Um, Ni Haishen has been on board the uh, Shenzhou 6, and he is very much experienced, and he will be the commander of the mission this time. And Zhang Xiaoguang is one of the first batch of uh, candidates trained for the manned space mission, and Wang Yaping is one of the first batch of female astronauts. And this kind of a gender combination can make most of the advantages of the crew members. Um, but Wang Yaping will be the main instructor of uh, the space team and he can also carry out the, uh, the, the manual and doc and document. Mm -hmm. The two male astronauts are mutually backup, and they are both um, capable of uh, com complex management and dealing with those emergencies. Um, and also, uh, the female astronaut, uh, Ron Dugan Duncan, and um, well, the um, objective of the mission this time is different that um, for, the, for, for the previous two uh, missions, uh, the objective is to master the rendezvous and docking technology. And this time they're going to verify and strengthen the technology and to gain more experience 
for future space station. And uh, so far, three auto docking and one manual docking have been, have been conducted, and they need more flight tests for the future uh, program after you. Thank you very much indeed. Our reporter Tang Bo at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in Northwest China. You're watching CCTV News. Stay with us. Reaching for the stars. The next chapter in China's space program. Three astronauts docking with the Tiangong-1 space module. With more experiments and technical breakthroughs, pushing the boundaries of human achievement on a mission to the infinite cosmos. Mission Shenzhou-10. See it on CCTV News. The development of space technology has been a priority in many countries' science strategy. Now, in our virtual studio demonstration, let's take a look at some of the pioneering space programs being carried out in other major space powers, as well as the current state of the International Space Station. Hello and welcome to our virtual space studio. It might be human nature to explore the unknown, and today we'll be looking at the great milestones in human spaceflight. And joining us in the studio is Mr. Guo Jiong from the Center for of Space Utilization at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's very nice to have you on the program, Mr. Guo. Thank you very much. So let's begin with the Apollo program. It was designed to land humans on the moon and bring them safely back to Earth. Carried out by NASA, it started at 1961 and lasted for more than 11 years. Now let's look at a, the Apollo spacecraft. It was mainly composed of three parts, and this is the command module. It's a cabin which houses a crew of three and equipment needed for re-entry and splashdown. And now here is the service module. It provides propulsion, electrical power, and storage for various consumables required during a mission. And now last at the back is the lunar module. And as the name suggests, it's used to explore the moon. Now let's take a little trip back in time. The exciting moment uh, when human beings began to uh, travel further. The Apollo 11 mission succeeded in the landing first human on the uh, moon. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human being to set foot on the moon's surface. One giant leap for Apollo set several uh, major milestones in human spaceflight and laid the foundation for NASA's current uh, human space flight capability. Well, let's now turn to another famous human space program, the Soyuz, which is Russian for Union. The Soyuz program was initiated by the Soviet Union in the early 1960s. It was, ri it was originally part of a project intended to put a Soviet astronaut on the moon. And here comes the Soyuz spacecraft. It consists of uh, three parts. Here is the uh, orbital module. It's where crew live during their missions, and uh, this is the uh, return re-entry module, which returns the crew to Earth. And uh, this is a service module um, with a solar panel attached. It contained the uh, instruments and uh, engines. And in fact, the first Soyuz mission resulted in tragedy. Now, here's a video of that part. It was launched on April 23, 1967, but the cosmonaut on board, Vladimir Komarov, died when the ship crash-landed. And despite these early fatalities, Soyuz is now considered the world's safest, most cost-effective human spaceflight system. And after the retirement of NASA's space shuttle, Soyuz is the only spacecraft currently being used for transport to and from the International Space Station. The International Space Station, or the ISS, is currently flying at an orbit of around 400 kilometers above the Earth. The most complex structure ever built in space. And now let's take a closer look at this structure. Well, here is a Zara module. Uh, it is the first component of the ISS. This module was designed to provide the uh, station uh, initial propulsion and uh, power. 
It was launched by Russia in November 1998. And now here is Destiny. It's the first laboratory installed on the International Space Station. It was built by NASA. And Destiny was installed in February 2001 and has been operating ever since. It's played host to hundreds of experiments over the years. Here is Canada Arm 2. It is a, bit, a bigger, better, smarter version of the robotic arms uh, that was on the space shuttles. It is 58 feet long, when fully extended, and has seven motorized joints. And now up next is the Columbus Laboratory. It's the European Space Agency's largest single contribution to the space station. And the Japanese experiment module Kibo, which means hope in Japanese. It is Japan's first human space facility and enhanced the unique research capabilities of the ISS. Well, the ISS is arguably the most expensive single item ever constructed by humanity. It's currently being operated by 18 countries, and China has also made its own contribution to the station. Its existence and operation is a major example of international cooperation in modern history. Well, of course, life on the ISS is not hard work. It can be fun, too. Last month, Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield finished out his five-month mission on the ISS with the music video Space Oddity. And this video has been watched on YouTube for more than 2.7 million times. And we're now going to leave you with some highlight of this cool video and also some unusual views from the International Space Station. These are views that you don't get to see anywhere else. Great. Let's uh, take a look and listen to the music. Well, I think that's a music video that David Bowie has been dreaming for his life. And that's it for this special live coverage on CCTV News. I'm Pandong in Beijing. Bye for now.